Hey everyone, welcome back to WeatherWise. I'm your host, Dylan Hudler, and in this episode, we're gonna be talking about storm chasing. Something really cool, and as a weather nerd, I really enjoy. What the heck is storm chasing? Where do most people do it? And why do they do it? Storm chasing is pretty self-explanatory. You think storm chasing, it's literally chasing a storm, but people do it for different reasons. They do it to take pictures, um, make money, get video, and then others for the right reasons, like meteorologists do it to gain atmospheric knowledge and to understand the processes behind why severe storms happen the way they do. It's really useful information that we can't get just by looking at computer models here in the Weather Center. So, uh, People in the United States storm chase in two main zones. First zone is in red. Yeah, we're right in the bullseye here in the southeast, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Arkansas, Louisiana. This is the southeast. Obviously, you know, we get a lot of severe storms around here and severe storms attract storm chasers. You may have even seen them on the side of the highway with a big severe weather day. They also storm chase in the blue region. This is traditional tornado alley out here in Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas. And the reason most people chase out here is because it's flat, there's no trees, you can see storms a long ways off, and you can take pictures of storms like this. Look at this cool shelf cloud, blue colors up there above the cloud, likely some big hail with that storm. And then, wow, this beautiful storm, textbook supercell, like something you'd see in a meteorology textbook. It's cool that our chief meteorologist, Isaac Williams, actually took these photos, and every summer, he travels out west to Tornado Alley and chases with a group of students at Mississippi State. Him and another professor go out there. They have a storm chasing class. That's right. Students actually get credit for going on this storm chase. You can see this is their van where Isaac sits. He's got his laptop set up on a stand there and he can use the laptop to navigate the van and the rest of the chase team as well as see weather information, look at the radar and kind of navigate them to put them in the best position. This is Dr. Barrett Gutter, one of my professors over at Mississippi State as well. You might be thinking, why does he have a balloon? What is he going to just going to let it go? This is a weather balloon. Here's his students. They're helping him to set it up. He inflated the weather balloon. And this is really important for gathering that atmospheric data because down here in this little cup looking thing is, is a box packed full of small instruments, gadgets and gizmos that help record atmospheric data as the balloon rises through the different levels of the atmosphere. This is actually what the data looks like from that same balloon I just showed you taken in West Texas. This red line shows what the temperature does as the balloon rises in the atmosphere. This line shows what the dew point does, and we can also tell what the winds are doing with height in the atmosphere. So this is just one of many ways that storm chasers can help gain uh, knowledge about the atmosphere and what goes on with those small processes near severe storms. That's all I have for you today. If you have any questions, feel free to email us. Of course, follow us on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. Let me know what you guys want to hear. And until next time, I'll see you later. WeatherWise is brought to you by Four County Electric Power Association. 